So can I ask you first, sir, we've talked to a lot of ex-prisoners and I've been surprised how positive a lot of their memories have been of their time on the island. I wondered if I, I could ask you what were your happiest moments? What was your happiest moment, possibly, on Robben Island? I think uh, <clears throat> that would be very difficult to say. Uh, I would not be able to identify any single moment in which uh, I felt uh, happiness in my life as a prisoner and, uh, and where the, all prisoners were blacks. But nevertheless, because of the extent to which these ideas were supported by Democrats, both inside and outside the country, uh, was a source of tremendous inspiration and brought us happiness to know that uh, the efforts of uh, the regime to isolate us and to make us forgotten uh, by the people outside had completely failed. The general picture was one of high morale and the hope that uh, we will return. I think it was uh, Comrade Sisulu who said that the government made a strategic mistake by placing the entire opposition on the island. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, I think so. Uh, there were advantages in members of various political organizations being together. And uh, in spite of the fact that uh, there are still divisions, nevertheless, uh, our organization has gained tremendously from the fact that we were together. We were the most, the largest group, the most experienced, and uh, we were therefore able to make a tremendous impact on the prison population, even on those who belong to rival organizations. My first punishment was uh, for uh, possessing a newspaper, which uh, award uh, left to me. You had that situation right from the beginning. And uh, there were orders who were prepared uh, to defend our rights as contained in the regulations. They fought against smuggling of food and uh, prepared our food, although it differed from that of uh, the colored and Indian colleagues, but uh, they prepared it in such a way that it became tasty. And uh, we could, got our full rations. So that also uh, helped us to change our strategy because we soon became aware that a warder in your section, an ordinary warder, not even a sergeant, if you, want, if you say, look, can I today have uh, some gravy from the kitchen? He just goes to the kitchen and gives you gravy. And uh, if they are going to persecute you, they will do so through the waters in your section. And when you have this support from uh, this good relationship with waters in your section, it is becomes difficult for the higher ups to treat you uh, roughly because they have to do it through the waters. Mm -hmm. And in that way, we were able to win the support of many waters. You learned Afrikaans. And therefore, we have had uh, this good relationship. Were there particular warders, like, for example, James Gregory, that you became close to? Could you describe that? Yes, no, we are very friendly with uh, uh, Lieutenant Gregory, as his present rank is. He uh, is, and uh, I also dis uh, developed a similar respect uh, with Major Moray, and, uh, and also uh, Warren Officer Brandt in Polsma. Now, if there is any place I know very well, it is the Western Cape. And uh, that knowledge was acquired when I was in Victor Fester. Uh, I traveled all over the Western Cape, right up to Sultana Bay, 
and, uh, and also right up to Komeki uh, because of the good relationship I had uh, with the warders. And uh, they took advantage of any of our trips to town to see a specialist uh, or uh, when we went uh, to Tain Hayes. Uh, they took advantage of that and we went right round the Western Cape, yes. And uh, I appreciated that very much. But at the same time, so they were also, for example, censoring people's mail, uh, making it difficult often for visitors to come. There was this paradox about the relationship. Well, uh, no, uh, in Polsmo, uh, in Robin Island, censoring was very vicious. But once uh, my colleagues and I were transferred to Polsmo, the censoring virtually disappeared, and uh, both in regard to newspapers and to letters. But in, in Victor Fester, mm -hmm. I was just a normal person. I read any literature I wanted, any publication I wanted. And uh, any people who wanted to visit me were allowed to visit. Mm -hmm. As you know, it was in Victor Fester that I consulted my colleagues outside, both in prison and outside prison, on the question of negotiations. <clears throat> I saw people from the Transvaal, Free State, the Cape uh, Natal, mm. and uh, in large numbers, delegations of 12 at times, and I saw prisoners, both from, from Robben Island and Polsmo. Mm. And uh, so I was leading a normal life, except that I couldn't leave prison. Mm. And uh, all kind of censoring disappeared. No. Can I take you back to the island, sir? Because the, the, the film is only gonna talk about the island. Yes, I, asked you, I asked you before the, we changed that role, whether you ever thought of escaping, whether escaping, you're on an island, did you dream of escape or not? Well, a plan to escape is always uh, the part and parcel of the life of a prisoner. And um, whilst I won't go into details about that, but um, those plans were always in considerations, both uh, when I was uh, in Johannesburg jail. In fact, that is the place where uh, I almost escaped. And uh, it was not so easy in Robben Island because of the sea around and because of the fate of those who wanted to escape. The only person who succeeded in escaping was in 1659, um, Auchumayo, who is uh, regarded uh, called uh, Harry de Strand Luper. He, he did escape in a boat uh, which was uh, discarded because it had holes and uh, it was no longer seaworthy. He was able to escape in that boat. And, uh, but all the others that tried after that uh, ended up in tragedy. Like Makana. And like Makana. There was uh, also a group of uh, prisoners, ordinary prisoners, common law prisoners who tried they had gone already halfway, more than halfway, uh, the sea, when fishermen saw them and uh, caught them. Otherwise, they would have escaped. Mm. Talking of Makana, I mean, as we've learned, the island has a very deep and very tragic history of its own. Were you conscious of the history of the island whilst you were there? Oh, yes, I did. I read uh, quite a lot of works. And secondly, <coughs> I pressurized the authorities to allow me to visit the Kramat, the holy shrine, uh, which is visited by the Muslim community. Uh, it was set up, they put up there as uh, the shrine in honor of uh, Sheikh Mandura, who fought the Dutch uh, in uh, Batavia. Then uh, there is a graveyard there. I don't know if he had the opportunity of visiting it, that graveyard is very interesting uh, because you can see some of our history buried there. I saw, for example, uh, one chief, uh, a female chief from Thabanju, uh, who was sent there uh, because uh, he rebelled against uh, the authorities at the time and he was deported to the island. 
And uh, it was the first time I, I saw that. And uh, I had been urging the authorities to allow me to visit that graveyard because I suspected that one might uh, make uh, very important discoveries there. It took me years before they could allow me to go there, but only after other prisoners had been locked up. And uh, I spent about three hours there, and uh, I discovered a lot of history. And what was your feeling about this legacy of resistance on the island? Did that also inspire you, interest you? Oh, undoubtedly. Uh, <coughs> the fact that uh, you have had uh, people who were sent to the island, <coughs> uh, like uh, Makana and uh, like Makoma, uh, Chief Makoma, who commanded uh, the Khosa armies and uh, brought uh, the most uh, disastrous uh, defeats uh, on the English and captured uh, uh, no less uh, than half a million cattle and sheep from the uh, British. Uh, the fact that uh, they were on the island uh, gave us a lot of encouragement. And do you think that Robin Island has a special importance in South African history as a whole? Has it become a, a symbol of some kind? And if so, a symbol uh, of Robin what? Island uh, should actually be developed as a museum and uh, where the people's history uh, is uh, <coughs> preserved, is where a place for archives, uh, and, uh, uh, what you call um, a building uh, for archives uh, is put up. It's uh, too important uh, just to be turned into a mere tourist resort to be commercialized. Was this something the authorities tried to suppress? Was this something you had to struggle for, your cultural activities, your cultural rights? Everything was uh, suppressed, uh, which uh, uh, enhanced your uh, worth as a human being. It was uh, brutally suppressed. But we fought back, and we won that battle. Can you recall any particular events? It's very interesting for my audience. For example, things like Christmas concerts in your section. Oh, yes. Well, that was a wonderful occasion we looked up to, <clears throat> where everybody would render an item. And uh, there were very good singers there. But we also had a choir which entertained uh, prisoners on occasions like Christmas and uh, sang uh, during the day. And uh, we also staged the plays. And uh, our chaps like Neville Alexander were uh, very good at uh, Daniels. Uh, uh, we, we, we really enjoyed ourselves. And you played games a lot, I think, as well. This was sort of no, that's what, that, that we did. Uh, basketball, tennis, and uh, I mean volleyball, tennis, and uh, soccer. Uh, and then, of course, indoor games. They didn't let you Table box tennis. Tennis. Yeah. So perhaps just to go back on the, on the question of sport, why was sport important? You've got a lot of men confined on an island with tensions, I'm sure. Why was sport important? Oh, important. Uh, and uh, it's also healthy. It's a good exercise. And uh, uh, it enables you to overcome whatever ailments uh, you may have. And uh, I would encourage uh, uh, the fullest participation uh, by our people in sports. On the island, were sports inter-organizational? Was that important? Yes, no, no. There is nothing we organize on the basis of organization uh, in prison. And uh, we organize it on an individual basis. And it was a correct strategy. Why? Because big friendships are formed in the course of such games. Uh, it is the duty, it is the desire of everybody in a team to win. And uh, there must be close cooperation. You must recognize the ability of the other sportsmen uh, uh, as a striker, as a left winger, you know, as a full back. Uh, you have to recognize those qualities as a goalie, 
And uh, that it cultivates a mutual respect uh, and acceptance of the particular gifts of an individual. Talking of sports, why do, why do islanders look so young? Why do ex-islanders like yourself look so young? Islanders? Mm. Well, I don't know about this. Uh, we're nevertheless growing. Uh, you are old or young, uh, depending on how you feel, uh, your spirit. And um, you can uh, put a lot of verb in you uh, by the ideas that you hold. If you feel that you still have a role to play, you will look relaxed and young. But if you think that you have reached the end of your life, then, of course, that must be reflected also uh, in your appearance, your demeanor, and so on, the way you work, you walk, and so on. And then we have to finish. I just want to ask you finally, is there a lot of camaraderie still between people who were on the island? Do you see oh, there? yes. No, that's true. And that ran across uh, uh, political differences. One of the persons, you know, I regretted that he died was uh, a member of the PC, uh, Jeff Masimula, and a member of Azapo, Munto Moyeza, because both of them were people you could rely upon to build a national unity. And uh, it was a real tragedy when they died one after the other. And uh, fate can be very unkind very brutal, and I felt at the death of those two very much. <clears throat> Do you ever dream about the island still? Do you ever dream about the island? Not really. 